देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टीज नंबर वन इन सिंगापुर का मैं लंबा सके निवासी मेरा नाम प्रेम चंद्रा है देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू को मेरा सलाम मेंजी में देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू रेडियो फिजिक टू में देश की धड़कन मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है रेडियो फिजिक टू इज नंबर वन इन सिंगापुर का मेंजी में मेरा धड़कन है रेडियो फिजिक टू हम ननुपुर के लिए रहता है और हम रेडियो फिजिक टू हरदम सुनता है हमें रेडियो फिजिक टू सुनो बहुत अच्छा लगे आप भी रेडियो फिजिक टू सुनो देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू In this bulletin, police and immigration officers to tighten security at Western Marinas. Inmates serving one year or more not eligible to vote. And Rajeshwar Singh appointed acting Na National Secretary of the Fiji Trades Union Congress. Good evening, welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Authorities have tightened security at border exits, particularly at the marinas, following concerns that border control laws may be breached by some people. Mika Longa has the details. The tightened security follows the discovery of a newspaper ad by a 75-year-old yacht owner from Poland searching for young girls to perform the role of housewives on board his yacht. The Immigration Department's Manager of Compliance and Investigation, Naim Bukavuli, told a Radio Fiji One talkback show, police officers are now stationed at various marinas as they have the powers to board and search vessels. It doesn't only end with the police. They also referred back to us to get proof from the respective families that their parents have given approval. This is happening mostly in the Western Division. The Immigration Department has received similar cases from other parts of the Western Division. There's a case in Ra. Police are well aware of this. Reports are also coming from the Southern Lao Group. People are advised to be vigilant as they have the right to question Yatis setting foot on the islands. There are plans also to empower village headmen to assist with the policing of our borders. If villagers need specific training on this, the Immigration Department is ready to conduct it. While authorities are doing all they can to protect our young ones from being exploited, parents and guardians can stop this from home by keeping a close eye on the movement of their children and equipping them with sound advice. Mikalonga, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has praised the contribution made by the Rotuman community to the life of the nation in a speech to mark Rotuma Day 2014. As part of a ceremonial welcome, Bainimarama was carried ashore from his vessel on the shoulders of the men of Chuchu. Chu. He said there is no doubt that for such a small and isolated place, Rotuma has had a disproportionate influence on Fiji's development. Bainimarama gave a list of improvements made by the government in the past six years. These include better roads and improvements to the Oinafa jetty. The Prime Minister has a meeting with the Islands Council and a Talanoa session tomorrow. He returns to Suva on Thursday. Inmates who are serving a 12-month sentence or more can't vote in the September 17 general elections. The 2013 Constitution says if an inmate is serving a sentence of imprisonment of 12 months or longer imposed by a court in Fiji or by a court of another country, does not have a right to be registered as a voter. Inmates who are registered to vote and is serving a term over 12 months will now be removed from the voter registration role. The Fiji Correction Service and the Supervisor of Elections, Mohamed Sanim, met recently to iron out the issue. Yes, there are a certain group of persons who will be voting um, uh, before polling day, and those are persons who are in institutions such as the corrections facilities. And what we are doing is we are working closely with the Fiji Correction Service in identifying those who are entitled to vote and then we will be planning with the Fiji Correction Service on the times and dates in which uh, they will be able to vote. We had a meeting uh, with the Supervisor of Elections and his team up at the Elections Office. Um, I think it was uh, last month and then um, uh, it has been decided that uh, prisoners who are serving terms uh, 12 months and under 
less than 12 months, the, who are serving less than 12 months sentences uh, before 17 September 2014. These are the prisoners that, that uh, will be eligible to vote. Uh, we also have um, our remand, uh, uh, those in remand around uh, the institutions, uh, in the institutions around the country, uh, remandees will be eligible to vote. The elections office is working with the Fiji Correction Service to get the list of inmates who are serving more than 12 months so that they can be removed from the voter roll. Um, we're still trying to uh, um, work out those uh, who are serving sentences 12 months and under. Once that is finalized, then the names will be um, given. So inmates will be uh, voting within the institutions. They won't be uh, taken out of uh, the institutions, but they will be voting within the institutions in the facilities around the country. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim also confirms essential staff, including prison officers and police officers, will be allowed to vote before the actual polling on September 17th. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim has briefed the President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau. Defence Minister Choketani Lokanasinga and Solicitor General Sharvada Sharma on the progress of the Fiji Elections Office towards elections on September 17th. So we, the Fiji Elections Office uh, uh, had the uh, honour of having His Excellency the President uh, visit us yesterday and uh, we provided him with a briefing on the progress of elections uh, for his use when he travels overseas uh, uh, shortly. Saneem informed the President that the voter registration process is ongoing and voters have to be registered by August 4th if they want to vote in the 2014 general elections. He says given the short time frame they have, the Elections Office is working round the clock to ensure the elections run smoothly. Fiji Public Services Association's General Secretary Rajeshwar Singh has been appointed Acting National Secretary of the Fiji Trades Union Congress. The National Secretary post was held by Felix Anthony, who has resigned to contest the general election. Anthony is the leader of the People's Democratic Party. FTUC President Daniel Urai says Singh has been the Assistant National Secretary of the Congress for the past 11 years. And still to come on FPC News Cervical Cancer, raising concerns at the health headquarters. Welcome back to FBC News. Work on declaring Korovo in Tailevu a town is slowly progressing. Commissioner Central Leisenia Tuitumbo says development work got off the ground last year with an estimated cost of between one to three million dollars. Eleanor Turangai View reports. The recent hive of activity around the region has prompted government to plan on declaring the tiny commercial center of Korovo in Tailevu a town. Due to, to the completion of uh King's Road and uh, the, the rising uh, demand on Natovi uh, Jetty and the amount of uh, investors that are interested in the free zone, uh, tax free zone, sorry, that has been declared by government on the last year, last year's budget. That's when uh, we relook at uh, Corvo now as a, because of the, the lot of potential that is uh, coming up. Eh? Firstly, authorities are working to ensure services are available before they move on to getting the township status. First, we have to improve the drain and also to get the business uh, house together so that uh, people, uh, the business uh, people work together with, uh, with our local authority. And uh, we are waiting the, uh, the Ministry of Environment. So we will conduct a... Uh, and the impact assessment, the environment impact assessment of the new dumping site, which is proposed for Korobo. Laisine Tuitumbo says the development has been a long time coming and they want to ensure the maximum benefits return to the people. Over the years, I think uh, 
It was run by local authority, which is uh, headed by the Minister of Health. And Minister of Health. Of course, uh, I think, or oh, this is just my opinion, that there was no, no, no plan on nothing of these incentives that is given by government before. That uh, Korobo was uh, was not in uh, on the plan of becoming a town. Eh? The Commissioner Central says it will take time to get the township status. The first phase of the project, improving services, is still being carried out. And once this is done, they can move on to developing the infrastructure. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Early diagnosis of cervical cancer is a challenge for the Ministry of Health. And a leading specialist at the CWM Hospital in Suva, Dr. James Fong, says there is a need for a good screening program that is to be taken out to the communities. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. Cervical cancer is the leading cause of death of women in Fiji and the numbers are quite high by world standards. And according to the health ministry, only a small number of women who need pap smears can be accessed through the screening programs. We know that pap smear screening, our problem is that we can only access 10% of the women who need pap smears. And because uh, the problem with all our screening programs for, pep, for cervical cancer, the program should not rely on the person coming forward for screening. It has to rely on our ability to go and look for individuals and screen them. To actively go out and screen them requires money, it requires coordination, it requires a lot of resources. According to Dr. Fong, many women who are diagnosed with cervical cancer often present themselves late to the clinics. Anna Seinivere Valu was just two months into her marriage when she got diagnosed with cervical cancer. The doctor informed me of my treatment, but at times my body ached from the number of injections and the amount of medication I took. The health ministry says that 50% of patients diagnosed with cervix cancer will die within one year of diagnosis. This can only be prevented if there is an early diagnosis to allow for early treatment. Vasita Kotimasawasa, FBC News. The Forestry Ministry says communities are now more aware of the importance of preserving natural forests. The Ministry has received many requests from the public for more awareness and advocacy on protecting these resources. Akasita Tale reports. Production of timber from natural forests has reduced significantly from around 28,000 cubic meters in the mid-80s to now less than 50,000 cubic meters a year. This is because more communities are preserving their natural forests. We have um, most of the whole of Tabeuni, Tabeuni Forest Reserve, and we have Ravilevu. We have um, Tomanivi, and um, we have uh, Sovi Basin. So, um, and then we have Zaloisuba. There's, the, uh, there's quite an, a significant amount of conservation activities going on in the country. Fiji's efforts to preserve its natural forest have not gone unnoticed. Uh, Fiji has come a long way and uh, Fiji is one of the countries in the Pacific that has a contributing forest sector, not only uh, getting uh, production from the natural forest but also successfully from its uh, plantation forest. This growing trend means the ministry now faces new challenges. The bulk of Fiji's forest, I mean natural forest, are owned by our native resource owners. Only the resource owners are the ones that are making the decision whether to cut forest or whether not to cut forest. Industry only come in and make applications, make requests, but the final decisions rest with them. The issue here is how are we going to compensate them if we want them to conserve the forest. With more requests to preserve the forest for ecotourism purposes, there's a lot of pressure from those outside the forest sector, such as logging companies that want to buy local timber. This is a delicate balance that needs to be maintained so that all parties are catered for. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Now for sports, here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening. In sports tonight, five Fiji under-19 football players suspended indefinitely and Cricket Fiji announces expatriate coach. This and more after the break. Today FM is number one here in Singataka. We are today FM in Lambasa. It's My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Uh, listening to Today FM. 
Today FM rocks into work. I love today's kid music. I love today FM because they play all my songs. We love today FM at Woody Valabasa. Yeah, it rocks. I love today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. Leading sports tonight, the Vodafone Fiji Under-19 team preparing for the World Cup playoffs have been dealt a severe blow. This after five of its players were suspended from the squad for disciplinary reasons. There was Yosef Overuvo along with Kelvin Naidu, Samuel Angabo, Waisea Yavala and Avnil Kuma have all been suspended. Fiji FA Senior Vice President and National Team Director Tarunes Reddy says they are waiting for Association President Rajesh Patel to arrive back into the country today to discuss the matter further. Meanwhile, the national squad has moved camp to the capital in preparation for the playoffs. After four months of training in Bar, the team is now applying final touches to its game plan before the start of the World Cup playoffs. Indra Singh has more from the under-19 camp. <laughs> It's all about perfecting the weaknesses and that is the sole purpose of these youngsters for the next week. Well, like I say, no, uh, in general this was 17 days, mm. they give us an edge uh, compared to what we need to do now in the next 12 days. And we, we are ready for that, we know exactly what we need to do and from there on um, we will be looking for the first day on the 23rd. Under the unpredictable Suva weather, the under-19s have started the last stretch of their training. The recent New Zealand tour did give the coaching staff what is needed to better the ball game for these youngsters. It was good, was a good experience because half of the game was playing in natural grass, half of the game being played in artificial, which is very difficult, they are not used to. But they adjust to everything. Um, we, they show us that physically they are perfect. That's exactly what we need. We just only need to pop a little bit now for the next few days for the World Cup. Be it between the sticks, in defence or in attack, precision and perfection will pay dividends. There will be no easy opponents despite not having Oceania Giants New Zealand featuring in this tournament. Without any doubt, they're going to be extremely difficult. I've seen people think, oh, we are island, we are in. It, it, that's not the case. Everybody, PNG at this moment is in, uh, in, the, in New Zealand. We saw the game they lost with New Zealand. So, But they will be very strong by the time they come here. So in general, um, uh, uh, we need to be very careful with everybody. We will take one game at a time, and, and then we'll be looking at the next game after. The under-20s are working hard, working hard towards a dream to make the World Cup in New Zealand next year. All this hard work can pay off at the playoffs next week in Suva. Interesting, FBC Sports. Cricket Fiji has announced former Bangladesh coach Shane Ugansen as its new mentor. Cricket Fiji says the deal was only finalized overnight and Ugansen comes to Fiji on a three-year contract to coach both the men's and women's national sides. His first assignment will be to improve the ranking of the men's side to ensure the re-entry into Division 6 of the World Cricket League at the ICC's East Asia Pacific Regional Qualifiers in November later this year. He starts with Cricket Fiji on June 2nd. Things are falling into place for the Fiji International Golf Tournament which will be played in August. Organizers are working around the clock to host the biggest golf championship in the country to date. Praveen Narayan has more. Fijian Vijay Singh is one who has been confirmed, but it seems people will have to wait a little longer before knowing the names of other golfers who will be coming to our shows. Key um, golfers from the Asian markets, from China, Japan, Korea, um, which will be really important to get them here. Um, and uh, look, Vijay Singh, we had to go with Vijay Singh, he's the prodigal son, he's returning, he's, you know, the, one of the greatest golfers ever. Um, and the fact that he's coming here to play in his home country, uh, it's huge news. And we are going to, he's going to lead, lead, the, lead the tournament in that capacity. The tournament will broadcast to over 400 million viewers globally, and the organisers have already positive feedbacks from world over. The tournament has received another major boost as the Intercontinental Hotel of Fiji has come on board as sponsors. To um, uh, ensure that everyone in the world understands that right now there is a new choice for travelling to Fiji. A new market, a new type of guest has a choice to come here to play world-class golf. Now it's only a matter of three months before the tee off. Who plays and who reigns or who bogies will be known in August. Praveen Narayan, FBC Sports. 
Digicel Fiji has signed on a new sports ambassador. The latest sporting personality to sign up is Fiji Pearl's sharpshooter Maria Lutua. An obvious standout during the Digicel Tri-Series in Suva last week, she joins fellow ambassadors Mbanuve Tambakao Doro, Osea Colini Sao, James Mbolambiu, Setofano the Kao and Ilias Andelana. This is a great challenge as well for me, um, being a, uh, now it's being a public uh, role model as well to, to all the little ones that are out there, um, not on court as well as off court. Um, and I hope I will do my best and uh, do my best for the country as well as for, um, for Digicel, the winning network. We're delighted that Maria is on board um, as the first um, sports uh, brand ambassador to, to join us after Thierry uh, four years ago. And uh, hopefully there will be a few more female uh, brand ambassadors joining uh, Maria because the potential in the country is huge and we hope to keep developing this. The deal will see Lutua advocating netball around the country and performing community tasks with other brand ambassadors. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Amrita now with business. Farmers on the Adia Island in the Lao Group are getting ready to supply the local market with their organically grown produce. The island was declared 100% organic free about one year ago. Shirin Lata reports. Farmers, students and other members of the community on Didia Island have put into practice lessons about organic farming. Their hard work has paid off as they prepare to market their produce. People have been made to be aware of uh, what is involved. Uh, we are slowly looking into the markets and uh, this is not going to be an easy task because uh, certainly we'll be competing with other uh, non-organic uh, farmers and producers uh, in the country. There are no chemicals on the farms, only 100% botanical pesticides. That means a lot uh, to ensuring a healthy uh, living, not only human beings but uh, overall across the environment. Uh, everything will be organic. Karikaritu says that traditional farming practices are still being used in Didia and these methods align well with organic principles. Ever since 1986, they have uh, started to take control of uh, the importation of uh, weedicides uh, and all chemical elements uh, related to farming. All farming systems and products comply with Pacific organic standards. The initiative is supported with funding from the International Fund for Agriculture Development. It is implemented by POETCOM, housed under the EU IACT project at SPC Land Resource Division in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Here's Trish with today's weather. That's right, Amrita. Now together, let's look at today's map where Suva and Savu Savu had occasional scattered showers throughout, but we well, but were fine for the rest of the day. As for Nani Lotokamba and Lambasa had fine weather all throughout the day, except for those occasional scattered showers. Now with the temperatures, the lowest were Suva and Savu Savu with 29, Lambasa 31, whereas Nani Lotoka and Ba hit 32. Tomorrow's conditions, we, well, Suva, Nandi, Lotoka, Mba, Savu, Savu, and Lambasa will, fight, will have fine weather, but do expect those occasional scattered showers. Further outlook, cloudy periods with some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, moderate east to southeast winds, fresh at times, moderate to rough seas. A trough of low pressure with associated clouds and showers to the northeast gradually moving towards the group. It is expected to affect the group from Thursday. Finally, with our photo of the days of the Three Sisters Hills in Lambasa, sent in by Mohammed Faisal Sheikh. Thanks, Trish. Now recapping our headlines. In this bulletin, police and immigration officers to tighten security at Western Marinas. Inmates serving one year or more are not eligible to vote. 
and Rajesh Singh appointed Acting National Secretary of the Fiji Trades Union Congress. On to our poll question. This week we ask, should there be an age limit on public service vehicles? Visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. That's FPC News for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night. Gonga Elambasa, Bulle FM, number two and a series. Do Talita and Warong and Bulle FM, number two and a series. So, what you took a graki or revert you in Stima? I won't do Talita and Warong and Bulla. Polabina Fiji, Bulle FM, number two and a single doca. Polabina, Terra Roda, Bulla FM, number two and a single doca. Bulla FM, number two and a series.